welcome hey posse it's indy monet welcome back to my channel let's get straight into episode 9 and 10 the finales of sweet life la if you love the show give this give my video a thumb up if you love the show give this video a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to my channel girl and let me know what other tv show reviews you want to see from me let's talk talk to me on social media at india monet let's get it cracking let's get it cracking so episode nine kicks off with ty and jill make it up girl i literally don't care let me know in the comments what y'all think was wrong we literally waited a whole year for this apology that i don't care about okay but oh my god um also episode kicks off rob but to be gets escorted out why did he get escorted out why do y'all think i think okay I don't know what it was. I feel like low-key this was kind of like a, he didn't do shit. They just needed him to leave because he was doing too much. It was just like a drop in and leave. My sister's um, theory is that maybe he has an assault charge. But I'm like, how you going to spill everybody else's tea and not tell us what's going on with you? Like, nah, we need we need what happened. Why are you leaving? For, I thought somebody was going to say it, but whatever, child. Let me know in the comments what y'all think below. So, um... I love how Brie was being very open with Pateri in this situation. She was, you know, telling him how she was scared. And, you know, I really think that Brie's very traumatized because I feel like I feel like a lot of people won't, are not going to agree with me and how I feel about Brie Pateri, but we'll get there. But I understand she's very scared and Pateri is really trying to help her. So let's go back to Marcus in AQ in Miami. So Marcus told AQ by Miami saying like, you know, uh, Miami said she wanted a real man. She wants somebody more masculine, which is not him. What? Like, ew. And I'm so happy if they want something to go after they, what I want. I feel like this was very tacky for him to go after his friend's girl. Like, y'all see that she, like, she was claimed at this point. Marcus, you're tacky. You're tacky. You don't get bitches. And this is why you come in after every girl you see. What do y'all think? Do y'all think Marcus is in the wrong for this? Ew. And so, like, he asked her, like, are you into her? And then AQ says, romantically, nah. And I'm like, why did he say that? Was he saying nah to Miami, period? Or nah to Miami just romantically because she said she was celibate? I think I think when AQ heard that Miami was celibate, he decided to back off. Okay. So, let's get into this boy's talk at the pool that really fucking triggered me. So, Kaylin, fake-ass Nipsey... <laughs> Jalen and Rob are talking. So Jay is telling the boys, I'm looking at rings. I want to get married. I know Ty is the girl I want to marry. But he's you can tell he's nervous. You can tell. But I'm like, anybody would be nervous. Like that's a big step. But here go. Oh, I'm such a hood ass, real ass nigga, Kaylin, saying like basically literally projecting. Basically saying like, oh, like Candace is trying to pressure me, bro. Don't let nobody pressure you into doing nothing you don't want to do. Da, 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 da. And then Rob goes, yeah, yeah, Ty has been pressuring me. I feel like she pressures me. Da, 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 da. And then Caitlin is like, oh, uh, Candace wasn't talking about this till Ty started pressuring her. And, so, da, da, da. and I'm like, bro, no hate is pressuring anybody. We're all going to have a conversation just like y'all. And we get perspective. You realize the things that you're doing in your relationship. And you're like, okay, I need to make some changes. And I feel like. While I think that Jalen is very strong headed and strong minded, I do feel like Kaylin persuade him a little bit to chill on getting married because Jay understands compromise. He's like, if I want a baby, I need to marry this girl, which I feel like is not a bad compromise. If you don't want to get married, then we just not going to have kids, period. Like it is what it is. And then you can just move on. But I feel like Kayla's like, bro, bro, don't let no nigga. We on God's time. We on God's time. I swear, God. If this nigga, I was like, if this man say God's time one more time, like literally, like, bro, no, you're playing. You're playing. You're. He's one of the people who tries to twist the words to make it fit his situation. Because if you were on God's time, then you would be trying to get married before having a kid. Because ain't that what it's saying in the Bible? And look, I ain't no, I, I ain't no, uh, I don't be in the church every day. But I know that you're supposed to be married and not have kids out of wedlock. But you ain't thinking about what the God, the word that God has put down. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, I just did not like the situation. I do think that Kaylin has some, has some words to say. And that's his cousin. I'm guessing Kaylin is older than Rob. But I'm like, you don't have nobody to look up to. Look up to somebody else. Look up. Not, not him. Like, I really just feel like. It was the blind leading the blind. And I'm like, y'all really want to have y'all cake and eat it too. I wouldn't be surprised if Kaylin is cheating. 
because you just want to do what you want. If you really know this is a girl for you, why are you tiptoeing around? And so he was like, yeah, Ty be pressuring me, da 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 Okay, then why you ain't speaking up? Like, I get that you don't want to rush marriage. R- marriage is not to be rushed. You want it to be natural. I definitely get it. No one says you have to be ready tomorrow. And he was like, oh, I want her to, to choose me. She's already chosen you, my nigga. Y'all live together. Y'all, y'all are back in love and been together for four years after this traumatic situation. You don't think she's already chosen you? That'd be my thing with men. Like, okay, let me not let me let me not project my situation into this into this video. But shout out to Rob for saying I value marriage and I know I want to be married. Rob is a real nigga and he's stand on his own no matter what. Period. And I feel like I like that he's like in between like the wolves and the wood because he he kind of like. He can go to any crowd, you know? I, I appreciate that. Because he got common sense, but he, he ain't, like, silly, you know? So, yeah. So, we move on to what else happened in this episode. Why is Brie trying to make Becky and PJ happen again? Girl, your friend was just depressed last season about all the flack she got about PJ. Why are you trying to make this happen? That really blew me. That really blew me. Okay, so um, they go salsa dancing. That was cute. Amanda asked Bree and Becky to put this surprise party together for Rob. That was amazing. Like I said, Rob is one of my favorite characters on the show. So, love it. So, um, at the party, PJ pulls Becky away from Cal. First of all, <sighs> why are you talking to this man? Why are you talking to this man? Because you're literally ruining it. You're ruining it with Cal. But we're going to get into that later. We're going to get into that later. Because that pissed me off. <laughs> so... A cute drunk ass come over here trying to talk to Miami. Baby, he should have been sober for this moment because Miami read this man down. She said, oh, you got the you got the titties out? You got the titties out? I don't know who got more titties out, me or you. Bro, Miami, like, literally the reads that she had throughout the season, girl. She said, first of all, first of all, let's, let's decode this outfit. Why do you have on leather in Mexico? Why? Why? Okay, the outfit was ugly. She he definitely looked like a vampire. She said, "You here for the niggas? You're not here for me. You got your titties out for the niggas, girl, girl." I was cracking. Um, uh, he was so mad that he that she tried to talk to AQ. A- he was like, "Oh, I was right there." Like he saw it, and I'm like, oh, "Why you didn't speak up?" Oh, and when she said that, she said that she was like a redman would have spoke up. Period. Like Miami don't be playing with you niggas. She said, "Don't bribe me, cause I bit you." She said, "You came here for the niggas," and then he tried to stun her, saying like, "Oh, I gotta pick up rent. You know what that mean? I own some shit." Okay, and what? And your character is fucked up. <laughs> like, and then Marcus came in doing unnecessary as usual. Like, but I'm like, y'all say that y'all like spicy, right? Y'all say that y'all like the spicy. So she got spicy with y'all, and both of y'all was hurt. I don't like how I don't like how Marcus tried to slide in. I really don't. <sighs> it was a lot going on. Let me know what was your favorite read from Miami in this situation, because girl, I literally had to keep pausing it and was like. Oh my God! What did she say? I swear, I'm I'm using them lines. You for the niggas, you not for me. She said, "I'm not for the streets. I'm not for the streets." Period. I, okay, this C was amazing. Okay, I loved it. Shout out to Miami. She has literally become one of my favorites on the show. So we're gonna go into episode ten. So be right before episode ten like starts. I feel like Brie... Okay, so before this situation happened, I was very much Team Pateri. Let me know if you're Team Pateri or Team Brie. I feel like... Okay, let's... Before the ending situation, I was very much like, oh, baby, I'm not missing out on Pateri. Pateri asked me to move to the, to Canarsie. I'm coming, baby. I'm coming. Like, that man is fine. You you could tell he's, like, attentive. He has a good head on his shoulders. He got a great job, career. He he takes care of her. She always talks about he make her feel safe. All it is. Oh, baby, I'm not missing out on Pateri. When you want me to move from L.A. Because, baby, I'm on the next flight, okay? <laughs> I'm flying about the dick. <laughs> okay, so episode 10, Pateri and Brie break up. And I get it. Okay. So she says, like, you know, when we're away from each other... We don't communicate, but when when we're together, you know, everything feels good. And she just couldn't, like, grab a hold on that. And I understand that. But we're going to, that's going to be the last thing I talk about. So, um, no, let's talk about it now. Let's talk about it now. Okay, so, um, 
No, should I? No. Should I? Should we talk about that now? Yeah, let's talk about it now. So, Pateri shows up at the last event of the show. And he comes with flowers. Okay, first of all, Bree says, you know, they broke up. He, they haven't talked in seven days. He called her twice. And she wanted him to blow him up. Do y'all think she was wrong for that? Like, if somebody called you twice and you don't answer, like, do they have the right to just leave you alone? Because, I mean, you did break up with him. So, I feel like in that moment, it was a little childish. But in my opinion, I feel like he could have texted. He could have texted and been like, hey, da, da, da. But also, I do think that she should have texted and been like, hey, I'm not in a, the mental to deal with this right now. Can I talk to you when I'm feeling better? Because she was very emotional, so I get it. Now, when he pulls up to the event, with flowers and first class tickets and saying like I want to work on this I felt I felt very overwhelmed naturally and I'm going to say that because I've been in a situation like this um I think like I said a lot of people probably not going to agree with me on this because I talked to my friends and they think that Brie is immature I think Ty and Amanda brought a lot of clarity to the situation I feel like in in this instance and experience I I know what it feels like for a nigga to be love bombing you and you're always like, am I making the right decision? Like your heart and your head are saying two different things. It's very scary and very confusing. I get it. I think that he was love bombing her. If I tell you to do X, Y, and Z and you're doing SWV, it don't make sense. It's, you, you, you're not doing it right. She said, when we're away, you, we don't communicate. And you decide to pop up again. I don't have a problem with you popping up. Like, I know you're going to pop up. I know you're going to be there. I know you're going to fly. I know you'll fly me out. That's not where her beef was. Her beef was when we're away. What are you doing? You're not thinking about me. You're not talking to me. And I feel like Pateri missed the mark on that, in my opinion. And it's like, you doing all this performing. She said, you got my location. Why you ain't pop up at my house? Why you ain't come up there? Exactly. I mean, I know this is for TV, but I'm just like... You know, you could have sent me a long text message and being like, hey, I know you didn't answer my calls. I'm thinking about you. I want to communicate with you while I'm in New York. Let's have a FaceTime date when you're ready. I feel like that would have been more impactful than showing up a flower in front of everybody, making me cry in front of everybody. I hate surprises. You showing up first class tickets when I live in L.A. and you live in New York and I'm not trying to move. But I want to be with you. But we're not communicating when you're when you're away yeah you I can't deny you in person that's not my that's not my issue my issue is when you back at home what are you doing because you ain't thinking about me what do y'all think about the situation because that's how I feel I feel Brie was in the right I mean like I said I wouldn't be missing opportunity I just go ahead and move to Harlem Brooklyn Bronx wherever he from I'm moving but I understood her in the situation so let's go back to the rest of the episode so Becky and Brie they have this underlying beef going on I don't know what it was from. This whole dim in the light thing, it was weird to me. I said that in my previous um, reviews. I was very confused. Like, is this some, like, light skin competition? I'm very confused. I mean, I know they're still friends, but I'm like, girls, let's get that under control. So, Candace and Kaylin, again, girl, I'm triggered. Um, when Candace told Kaylin, like, I'm not influenced, we're pivoting, girl. Hey, girl, exactly. Like I said, these men are a lot years behind their women. Like, the same shit that we were doing at 21, 22, 23, we do not want at 26, 27, 28, 29. Like, get with the motherfucking program and let's act accordingly. Like, <sighs> Kaylin definitely wants his cake and he wants to eat it too. And it's ridiculous. I literally cannot stand this man. Like I said, he definitely gives off um, very aggressive vibes. And I really hope that they come to a common ground. Um... Yeah, I just, I just don't, I just, I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. So we have a basketball game. It's the hood niggas versus the the chill niggas. <laughs> um, and Rob wins the winning shots. Like I said, my favorite guy on the show. Um, is this what Drill does for a living? Can somebody tell me what Drill does for a living? Because that's a question I need to answer. We would like to know. What does Mr. Sociopath do for a living? Drop it in the comments. <laughs> okay, so we're at the event. Girl, Miami is that girl, okay? She's in her bag. She put up with another nigga. And both of the niggas are upset. Isn't this nigga? He was like, he was so shady too. He said, oh, you had a margarita? Because you were looking a little salty, brother. Girl, I said, this, this girl to met her match. Like, I love, I lo she's giving very married character energy. And I love the situation. 
Bum, bum, bum. Let's go to the end. Okay. So, Candace brings it to Thailand that Jalen was looking for rings and she feels like Kaylin swayed his decision on proposing. Boom. Number one. I definitely feel like Candace definitely stressed the truth in the situation. She really, like, um, made the story bigger than what it was, I feel like, in my opinion. But I feel like she was projecting. She's projecting. She's projecting her situation. And um, she wants to be married so bad to Kaylin that she's like, girl, like, Kaylin fucked it up for you. Like, the the boy's not trying to marry us. I feel like she's trying to do some relationship. But I'm like, this was not the time for that. And so when she brought over Kaylin and Jalen, it really went into a shit show. Um, I understand why Thailin was so emotional. The outburst. I remember what outburst to people. Uh, the Thailand, hey, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, I feel like, yeah, like, your man's friends is not your friends. But I'm like, damn, you really fucked with some shit. And I'm like, to hear that, like, my man was ready to propose and we haven't even talked about marriage for real. You kind of ruined it for me. It's kind of fucked up. But I think that Thailand knows that Jalen is not easily persuaded. But then he goes and say, like, yeah, I do feel like you pressure me. Da, da, da. And it's like, damn, nigga, how am I pressuring you? I do everything for you. That's that's like, who oh, yeah, the show was very triggering me. And he's like, oh, I feel like I missed a compromise. I have to do everything what Thailand says. Okay, nigga, why you didn't speak up earlier? Number one, y'all niggas have a lot to say, but y'all never speak up. Because when it be baby, y'all, we be y'all mama's part two. And y'all like that shit, so shut the fuck up. And number two, Thailand does so much stuff for you. She saved you off the streets. She got back with you after this traumatic experience. Like... She's loving up. Y'all don't be wanting more for yourselves. At the end of the day. And then, like, Kaylin was like, y'all trying to rush us. Da, 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 da. This is my cousin. I was getting my opinion. I agree with him that he gave his opinion. He said, bro, I don't know if you think you're ready. But really think about it. Don't rush it. I get that. But, y'all, like, I don't know. Like, it was a lot going on. And I felt so sad for Ty. I feel like Candace kind of did, yeah, basically what Kaylin did, projecting their relationships on this couple and it was just a fucked up situation who do y'all think was wrong please let me know in the comments what y'all think about this this situation who was in the wrong do you think candace was wrong for telling tylee should she have just like shut up about her business what do y'all think please get please let's talk in the comments this season was crazy it was a level up from from season one i love this season one but they brought the drama Shout out to Issa Rae. Like I said, I will move to LA. I want to be a part of the girls. But I love this show. Congratulations to everyone on this show. Y'all did a great job. And we know there's going to be a season three, but how season two ended. It was a lot going on, y'all. This season had me, had my heart racing constantly. So yeah, let me, let me know what you guys think about the season, everything that happened. And especially in episodes nine and 10, if you have not seen the rest of my videos, make sure you go back. I reviewed the whole season two. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Go check out a vlog or something. Stay over here. Hang it and kick you with me. Bye. Pass you out.